I'm Alan Spears with Occupy Democrats, and we need to have another little chat about the mental decline of Donald Trump and the utter state of the Republican Party. Now, as I'm sure you are all very well aware that this presidential election has certainly focused a lot on the issues at hand. However, there's also been a lot of conversation surrounding mental health and the advanced age of both candidates. Now, especially as of late, the far-right Republicans, the MAGA movement, and Fox News actually is one of the worst culprits, um, they've been caught editing videos or clipping them down in certain ways or cutting them off to make President Biden seem more confused or unaware of his surroundings. If you watch these clips in their entirety and unedited or cut off like Fox News, uh, you'll actually see that President Biden is often just looking at someone else or talking to someone off stage or is waving or saying something. It's it's really a lot of these instances that they show of him being confused. He's not. The same can absolutely not be said about Trump. Now, in recent months, it's actually become increasingly more clear that Trump is suffering some sort of cognitive decline or mental impairment as, case in point, Many of his latest rallies have had him going on these bizarre rants and tirades that have zero to do with any politics or even President Biden or any sort of policy. They're just odd. It seems that lately Trump is very focused on sharks and shark attacks and the dangers that they present. It's really confusing and I'm not entirely sure why he's focused on sharks right now, but hey, more power to him. Perhaps Trump would be a bit more in his element and at home if he decided to do a nature commentary like David Attenborough rather than politics. Joking aside, Trump's cognitive decline is cause for major concern, especially if he does get re-elected as president, and it's going to be what we're focusing on and watching in today's clip. Now, as many of you are well aware, Trump recently held a rally in Wisconsin just days after uh, he was vocalizing his disdain and contempt for the state. I do find it a fascinating political strategy to insult the state that you are currently in or prepped to go to. However, this could just be further evidence of Trump's mental decline. We've already seen evidence of that recently as Trump was speaking about Texas and Arizona interchangeably and seemed to be confused as to which state he was actually in or referring to. But it would seem that no matter where he is at, be it the Southwest or the Midwest, Trump is greatly confused and determined to prove that he is not fit to be president. Now I want you to go ahead and take a look at this video that showcases some highlights from Trump's rally in Wisconsin and really demonstrates just his erratic and confused behavior. See for yourself just what the former president and convicted felon had to say and just the really utter nonsense that he was spewing. We begin tonight with an earnest question. What on earth is wrong with the Republican Party? The sad state of what was once the grand old party was on full display yesterday when the convicted felon slash Republican presidential nominee, Donald Trump, held a particularly unhinged rally where he spent 90 minutes, folks, spewing a combination of lies, vitriol, and rambling word salad. Joe Biden's forming granting mass thing. He's going to formally grant a mass amnesty to millions of illegal aliens. Less than four years ago, our border was secure. Inflation was nowhere to be seen. The world was at peace. In 2016, we won. And then we did much better here in 2020. But they, you know, lots of things happened. And then in the end, we won. But they, you know, by that time, it was a little late. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor. Remember, I got indicted more than Alphonse Capone. Al Capone, what's better, this or sitting on the Pacific or the Atlantic, which has sharks? You don't have sharks, see? That's, that's a big advantage. Okay, so let, let's just be clear, and then we want to clear up a few things in the process. Four years ago, the world was not at peace. Trump did not win the state of Wisconsin or the election in 2020, and he has not been indicted more times than Al Capone. But perhaps even more embarrassing than Trump's deranged rant is his MAGA cronies' pathetic attempts to defend him. Okay, so as you can clearly see for yourself, Trump is losing it. 
there was a whole lot of word salad there, and some of those points I am just frankly flat out confused as to what he was really trying to get at, but let's see if we can't break this down. So in that first clip of him talking about mass amnesty to illegal immigrants, I don't know what he's talking about. I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, he didn't really seem to know what he was talking about either, as he struggled to articulate himself as he was speaking to the crowd. Um, I think he was just lying and riffing, and he just got lost in his own lie and couldn't quite articulate himself correctly. After all, he is bullshitting 24-7, and when he's in front of his audience and is live and unscripted and unedited, uh, he has to keep raising the stakes. He has to keep that energy going and has to make these lies even more and more grand to rile up his base and keep them foaming at the mouth. He then goes on to say that less than four years ago, uh, there was no inflation. There was practically an impenetrable border. Um, I think someone should remind him that less than four years ago, President Biden was elected. And confusion aside, immigration has always been a hot topic for the Republicans. It's something they constantly lean on every election cycle, and they always drum up fear and concerns about illegals coming into the country and bringing the worst of the worst. But in truth, they don't care. They're just using it as a talking point. They're trying to drum up fear and support for their candidates. And those that are here illegally are typically people that came here for work and have a work visa or a tourist visa and have overstayed. And on the note of inflation, that is not something that has only magically appeared within the past four years. It is something that has existed since pretty much economics existed. It is something that has occurred in the past and in the present and will exist in the future. It is a byproduct of the type of society we live in. And of course, then Trump goes on to say that they won here, uh, assuming in Wisconsin, um, but then they did stuff and they still won and then they didn't win and then they did win. I don't know what he's talking about. Trump did not win the state of Wisconsin in 2020, President Biden did. Now, it was by a slim majority, by less than, I believe, 1%, if memory serves, but President Biden did win. Of course, you and I, and even Trump himself, knows that he, he lost the state of Wisconsin. President Biden won it, and he's well aware of that. He's just saying the things to try to drum up support with his base, get them riled up, get them excited and probably have them do something incredibly stupid this next election. And then he goes on to ramble about the radical left, the communists, the Marxists, the socialists, the everyone not him. You know, I'm really getting tired of Trump and all of these far-right Republicans and MAGA people just endlessly talking about the radical left, the communists, the Marxists, the socialists. They don't, I guarantee you, they can't even define those names. And furthermore, let's just take a moment and let's let's really address this whole radical left sort of idea. Now, it shouldn't need to be said, but in every political movement, in every group, there are going to be people on the fringes, on the edges, that can paint the whole group in a very negative light. All it takes is one person to claim they work with a group or are a representative to do something stupid, to commit an act of terror, to do literally anything bad to sway the public in a different direction. So what is it exactly that this whole radical left has done to really anger Trump and the far right? They really do seem unable or perhaps unwilling to sort of dive into what the radical left even really is. They just label it that. They just say that, oh, anyone who has any semblance of liberal ideas is the radical left. Now, this is anecdotal, but even in my own personal experience, I have seen people labeling things like uh, being supportive of the LGBTQ plus community as being radical left. I've seen people who don't identify in a binary as male or female uh, being part of the radical left. I've seen people who think that corporations and billionaires should be more heavily taxed a part of the radical left. All of that is to say that Donald Trump and the rest of these far-right Republicans uh, they don't really know what they're talking about. They're using the far left or the radical left kind of interchangeably with, like, woke. Remember woke? Remember how now that has been 
co-opted by the right and is used as basically anything they just don't like. Trump and his gang are absolutely taking these terms like the far left or the radical left or woke. They're taking these terms and demonizing them. They're using them as just leverage to try to further oppress other individuals. Like seriously, how many times do you see Trump and his MAGA people lose their mind because there wasn't a traditional nuclear family in a movie? But that's just it, right? We're reaching the center of the issue, the real issue that has utterly consumed the Republican Party. Republicans, at least as they exist in the majority today, have lost any semblance of coherence or unity. They don't really have a message to perpetuate or a set of political ideals that they believe in. So much of what they thrive in or what they run on in their various platforms is just anti-left. And the few platforms or ideas or policies that these Republicans in the far right perpetuate and try to write into policy are typically things that further restrict our freedoms. Now, I absolutely do not have time to dive into this massive topic, but I strongly encourage you to look up and research Project 2025. Project 2025 effectively would be a set of policies, a set of legislation that allowed Trump to take on less of a presidency and more of a king role. And I do mean king in the sense that much of Project 2025 pushes Christian ideals into the presidency, into the White House, and establishes more of a theocratic system of governance. Some of it is subtle, but some of it is incredibly overt, and I highly recommend you look into this and educate yourself because this is some scary crap, and the Republicans know this, of course. And one of the reasons they want to push out this restrictive legislation is because they're slipping. They are dwindling in numbers. There is growing concern over the Republicans never being capable of fairly winning an election. And that's already been pretty clear over the past few elections. Republicans haven't won a popular vote in a number of different cycles. The conservative and backwards ideologies that so many of them tout and flaunt is dangerous. It is trying to push this country backwards in time, uh, tearing away rights from women especially, and they know this. They are trying to return to a point in time that we're simply not going to be going back to. These people know that despite their best efforts to interfere with elections, to redraw districts and, and maps and gerrymander to try to get the optimum vote and results for the Republicans, they are still losing. And this is just one of the multitude of reasons why these Republicans and Donald Trump and this whole thing is so bloody dangerous. With Donald Trump leading this country, with these far-right Republicans backing him all the way and trying to push their own legislation and projects like Project 2025, this country might never be able to recover. And I am not being hyperbolic when I say that. If these Republicans are capable of passing this legislation, if they are capable of installing Donald Trump once again, I don't know that this country will ever look the same. I don't know if those people who still continue to support Trump to this day will ever be capable of seeing the light at this point. But that is why it is even more important for all of the rest of us, for those of us that want to see democracy prevail and don't want to live in some nightmare authoritarian country to vote. I will be saying this until the bloody ends, but it is so important for all of you out there watching this to register to vote if you haven't already. And if you have registered, please show up to the polls. Do not let Donald Trump or any of his MAGA allies turn this country into the theocratic hellscape that they are desperately aiming for.